Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Come on on here. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We're live. Dealing with black on black crime. <clears throat> the war against black on black crime once again. Come on, Facebook Live and Periscope Live. Come on on. Because we're getting ready to deal with some things here. I told you I would be on. <clears throat> Vance Rosa Carr, God bless you tonight. We're dealing with black on black crime right now. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Boy, Pooh join. Come on. Get your followers. Brother Brian from Delaware, get your followers. Get your followers. They need this information. Thank you. Bless you, my man. Jazz Rod join. Look, swipe it. Whatever you got to do. Invite your followers. Hey, Dane. God bless you, sister. Get your followers on because we're going to deal with the war. It still goes on. The war against black on black crime is real. Yes, hello to you. Sister Nelly, God bless you. And hello, Dane. God bless you tonight. I'm so glad to be on here tonight to deal with this. Uh, uh, you did see the title, didn't you? This is about black on black crime, but you did see it's Super Bowl time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And God bless you too, Mr. Effie. Come on, get all your followers on. Facebook Live, Periscope. It's everybody talking about the Super Bowl. Super Bowl. It's Super Bowl time, but I got something to tell you about black on black crime at the last time the Patriots won the Super Bowl. Serious business. Serious business. A dad. An innocent dad. Mm-hmm. Come on, y'all. While others are coming on, let me go ahead and pray and get us ready. Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I appreciate that encouragement. Keep praying for me. You know the devil don't like what I do. But a warrior got to be a warrior. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, <clears throat> I give you praise. I give you honor. And I give you all the glory. I thank you, Father, for being able to come on and teach and minister and operate in the supernatural power of God. Thank you, Lord God, for the soldiers who are tuning in, the warriors, for the disciples of Jesus Christ. Jesus is our Lord and Savior. There's no other Savior other than Jesus. Our turn. Come on in. Hallelujah. I thank God for... Uh, uh, the war against black on black crime that I do. I thank God for fighting abortion, pro life that I do. I thank God for the warfare teaching that I bring on here and for healing of the sick. Hallelujah. Sister Agnes, hallelujah. God bless you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. She, she tries to sit at the feet of the anointing of the teaching. I thank God for being with me. I'm still fasting and praying. I still have a few more days to go. As a matter of fact, I have seven days to go before the 40-day fast is up. So I'm still praying and fasting. I'm still spending hours, hours every day with the Lord. And the Lord is really setting me, okay, getting me right. <clears throat> While I take a swallow of this deer part, let's deal with some things. First of all, I want to anoint you for this lesson. I want to anoint you because this is a battle. I don't know you for the battle. The war against black on black crime is a battle. Father, in the name of Jesus. Whew, glory to God. Let me anoint you too. Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Nothing like the Holy Ghost in this battle. Now, let's get to it. The war against black on black crime is serious business. I have never in my life seen so much killing in the earth in my life. Montressa, God bless you. I've never seen so much killing. I've never seen so much cold bloodedness, human being cold bloodedness in my life. And the majority of it is coming from black men who look like me. <clears throat> the majority of the murder is black men. During the shooting, and the ones that's getting killed 
are also the black men that look like me and you. What's wrong with that picture? Everything. Nothing's right about that. That right there, what, what the United States of America and all of the politicians and all of the uh, community activists, uh, I praise God, Evans Rosemary Reynolds, God bless you. I praise God for the community activists. I praise God for all of the things they're doing. But let me tell you something right now. This is a spiritual battle. First, it's in the natural, but it's a spiritual battle first. The only way that you can destroy this spirit from the pit of hell that's got black men doing all this murdering on a daily basis. The only way you can shut it down is through the power of God in Jesus' name. I'm not talking about inviting them to a prayer meeting or a prayer service. Yes, yeah, it's a spiritual battle. Ephesians 16, you're right. It's not flesh and blood. It is not. It, it does involve principalities and powers and rules of the darkness of this world. It does involve spiritual weakness and how many says Demons, period. That's who this battle involved. Now, until we come together and attack this thing spiritually, uh, we're going to get more and more murder, more and more mayhem, more and more violence from our own people against their own people. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Now, let's get to the Super Bowl. I watched the Super Bowl with millions and millions of people. You watched the Super Bowl, male and female, children. We watched the Super Bowl. And the Patriots just beat Atlanta on Sunday, which was my birthday, February 5th, a Sabbath day. All the Super Bowls fall on what? The Sabbath day. Sunday, the day that we're supposed to keep it holy. Observe to keep it holy. So, so, so all Super Bowls are on the Sabbath day. Now, let me tell you about this black on black crime on the Sabbath day of the Super Bowl when the Patriots played in the Super Bowl. Let me tell you what Super Bowl I'm talking about. Yes, indeed. Has a spiritual origin. Every, all this murder. There are generational curses involved. There are, there's all types of, of, of satanic forces involved. Satan himself is running this. He's got prince demons working through the black men to shoot and kill, but he's overseeing this big time. This is a big time mission. Uh, this is a big time hell mission. Uh, this is a big time from hell um, um, assignment to operate. Satan himself is behind this. This is a war. It's more spiritual war than anything, but it is a war. It is a battle. And the, and the Bible told us in Joel 10, proclaim you this among the Gentiles, prepare war. So we have to be prepared to fight this. Um, let's go to the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl that I am talking about took place February the 1st, 2015, on a Sunday, on the Sabbath day. February the 1st, 2015 Super Bowl, again, the New England Patriots, this is the one where they beat the Seattle Seahawks on that last play when they intercepted with a half a yard to go Patriots intercepted the ball and they won 28 to 24 well there was a young man a young man who was only 28 years old a young black man he watched the Super Bowl on the Sabbath day too he and three friends he had another black man with him and two black females with them. You got me? Now, they watched the February 1st, 2015 Super Bowl with the Patriots in Seattle. But they chose to watch it from a bar. Mm, knowledge is powerful. They watched the Super Bowl game from a bar. 
You know, even when I was in the world, I never went to a bar to watch the Super Bowl. I always watched it at home on my TV set. But they chose to go to a bar in Harlem, New York. You better hear me. Now, get this. In Harlem, New York, they're watching the Super Bowl game. And they decided, game's over, they're hungry. So they decide to walk to a nearby restaurant just to get a bite to eat on the Sabbath day. The way they said, the way they wrote it up in um, New York City, it said two men, two black men charged in fatal shooting of a Harlem father and the wounding of three others. Whoa. Two 24-year-old black men at the time, Carl Moore and Shavar Shiv Gilliam, both of them 24 years old, young black men. You know what they did? They gunned down 28-year-old Shadell Graham. Shot him down. Injuring his pals. No, I'm sorry. They injured four. There was another one with them, walking with them. They went, they went there with, with him and a guy and, and two girls. So they must have met someone that they knew who met them there because now it's five of them and four of them were shot also by these two black men. The women, the women were shot. The black men shot the women too. And they didn't care about them being female. They had been watching that Super Bowl at that bar and the gunmen followed them out of the bar. And when they got near the restaurant, both of them pulled out Two guns, one each. One black man in his hand, the other 24-year-old black man with the gun in his hand on Super Bowl Sunday, the last time the Patriots won. February 1st, 2015. And know what they did with that man? That 28-year-old young innocent man who just who just saw, who just watched a football game, enjoyed himself. Um, shot him in the back of his head. Where is the love? Where is the compassion? Where is the peace? Where is the guilt? Where is the shame? Where is the honor? Where, where are you from? Where are those two guys from? We know they're from Harlem, but by where are they from meaning, who are they from? What were their parents like? Their grandparents, their siblings. How were they raised? What school did they go to? It says here that shot him in the back of his head. Uh, they had been watching it and they followed them to rob them. That's all that was about. They wanted to rob them. So the young man that was 28 years old, he, he had some kids. And this, and this is what we do to each other. Black men got to stop. We must stop. As I look here, I'm going to send this out. As I talk to you about each case, I want to send a word out. Because what Jesus did on that cross is important to us. Jesus died on that cross to save us, not to have us murdered, murdered, murdered and murdered and murdered the way they're doing. I'm also going to tell you about bystanders. See, I could have named it bystanders, but I want to put the Super Bowl system, Super Bowl week on the title. But I really also want to talk about innocent black bystanders being shot and some killed, some wounded by black men, black 
men. They got to stop. They must stop. Please stop shooting. Please. You got gang bangers. You got gang. Um, I just heard a guy talking the other day. He said that they're not called uh, thugs anymore. They're called chiefs. Chiefs and kings. Chiefs and kings. That's what they're calling themselves now. Chiefs and kings. You merging innocent people is nothing chief about that. It's nothing kingly about that. We serve the king. King of kings, Lord of lords, Jesus. But they're kings. Ah, there's something demonically moving into the area. Already, it's, it's called a stronghold. See, a stronghold is when satanic forces claim an area, like they've claimed some areas. I'm going to show you those areas. Some of the areas. They claim those areas. And once the demonic forces claim that, the areas, they bring thousands of demons into that area. Thousands. And they have a prince demon over it. He's a prince demon. It's, it, it's a principality. And it's a principality of murder and mayhem. Yeah, straight from the pit of hell. It's a prince demon. And the prince demon, those although thousands of demons... In the stronghold, in the hood, in the areas where 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 uh, this is crazy, they only take orders from the prince demon, and the prince demon only answers to Satan himself, to Lucifer himself. So, we've got to root these demons out. We've got to war spiritually to shut them down. See, we have the power to shut them down. Thank God for the police. Thank God. But the police can't shut this demon down. Thank God for, for everything they're doing and, and all the other uh, resources. But there's only one thing that can stop hell, and that's the power of God. And I'm not talking about just marching up and down the street. God gave me the, the antidote. You hear me? I said it right. God gave me the antidote. Some preachers already have the antidote, but they're just not saying anything, just not doing anything. God just didn't give it to me, I'm sure. But no one's, but I've never heard anyone say what the antidote is, but I do know it. But I'm sure some other preachers know it too. Now get this. This is what he did on the cross for us in John 10, 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd give it his life for the sheep. My God, my God. Hallelujah. He gave his life for the sheep. Those murderers, these black men that's shooting, these black men that's, that's gangbanging, these black men that doing home invasions, carjacking, uh, drive-by shootings, they're the sheep. But they've gone astray. But they've gone astray. Now, uh, let me show you something here. In Chicago, uh, my sister, is this true? My sister just told me um, yesterday that President Donald Trump uh, has mentioned something about sending um, sending the uh, the uh, troops into um, uh, uh, the National Guard into Chicago. The National Guard. Everything helps. Everything helps. He did say that? Okay. Because, because I didn't know until she told me yesterday that, that he was in the National Guard. And guess what? National Guard and the police, they still won't be able to shut it down. They still won't be able to stop it. Because it's not a natural battle. See, see, look. You got to have a... Because the origin of black-on-black -black crime is spiritual, you must handle spiritual matters with spiritual things. You got to go to God. And you got to get spiritual weapons. You got to get spiritual weapons and begin to apply them and begin to use them. And they will work and shut this thing down. A lot of those young men. Oh, oh, by the way. Chicago. Had um, 700. You better hear me. This is crazy. Chicago has 762 homicides. 
in 2016. But wait till you hear this. I said Chicago, uh, they killed, they, they murdered. No car crashes, no cancer, no diabetes death, no heart attack deaths, no falling off buildings, no getting hit and run. And, um, you heard me. Murder. How do you kill 762 people in the same city? How do you do that unless, unless you are demonically provoked? demonically influenced. It's impossible for a man to kill 762 people unless they're on a battlefield in the military for a nation fighting against another nation. Nah, but you're right in the same neighborhood. So 762 homicides in 2016 is more. Oh, here it is. Do you know how big New York City is? Do you know how big L.A. is? You do, don't you? Come on up and hear some cheesy. You do know how big New York City um, and Los Angeles is. The two largest in America. Aren't they? Mm, I believe so. Cities, that is. Well, Chicago, I'm not talking about the whole state of Illinois. I'm not talking about Texas. So don't come up here. No, Texas law. I'm not talking about the, I'm talking about cities. L.A. and New York. New York is the largest number one. L.A. second. Mm-hmm. But guess what? Chicago is third. Whoa. So they're telling me that Chicago homicides in one year was more than New York City and Los Angeles, California combined. Oh, man. Jesus. Why? Y'all, there's a principality. Y'all, strongholds are real. They are there. Do you hear me? 762 homicides in Chicago. This is why he want to send the National Guard in. This is why. But, but this is sad. This is sad. Now, now. In 2015, they actually had 1,100 murders. Ooh, whoa. In 2016, while Chicago had 762 murders from, hold on now, I'm talking black murder. I'm talking black men murdering blacks now. Okay? I'm not talking about police officers. I'm not talking about white people. I'm talking about black on black crime. I'm a black man. My daddy was black. My granddaddy was black. I don't preach color from the pulpit. Oh, yeah, you got that right. Forefathers cursed that city. You got, Believe me, big time. Let me tell you something right now. I love black men because my daddy black, my granddaddy black. I'm black. Ooh, but I need them to stop killing blacks. I need them. <laughs> that's a hater right there. But that's okay. There are a lot of haters out here, but guess what? Haters can't stop the power of God. Jesus is real. And guess what? I'm going to talk, and I'm going to war, and I'm going to love Jesus, and, I, and God's going to use me, and that's all that matters. And anybody that come against me, the man of God, is actually coming against God himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not even going to block him. I want him to get saved. I don't even block the haters. You know why? Because I know that God will use me, and that hater will hear a word from God through me, and, and, and apologize one day and say, you know what? I'm sorry. But I surrender my life to Jesus. Anyway, get this. In 2016, while, while Chicago had 762 homicides, New York had 334. Man, look at that. Los Angeles had 294. But here's the deal. Another thing we got to pray against. Why don't we war against the ones that are smuggling the guns in too? Oh yeah, God, I know it. I know that already. Louisiana. 
Oh, oh, I'm dealing with all the cities, including New Orleans, including Louisiana. Now get this. Chicago confiscated. And they don't look, there's a lot of guns out here. There's a lot of guns. You know what? When I was coming up, there were hardly any guns out. Guys was fighting with their fists and bats. But there's so many guns, Satan opened up a portal for guns. He did. He opened up a portal for guns. And the Chicago police already, in just one year now, just one year, last year, I'm talking about last year now, confiscated 8,300 guns. 8,300 guns. Can you imagine 8,300 guns in the hands of of some black men in the neighborhood whom a preacher from Chicago, who, who's, who's also an activist, he said that he works with them. He, they had meetings meeting with the chiefs and the kings, and he said that most of the young men in those gangs have mental problems. He said, yeah, thugs, no, murderers, killers. He said that most, he said that most of those kids have no father in the house. They came up in a fatherless home. Most of them have been angry since uh, a toddler, since childhood, since elementary school, since middle school. A lot of them uh, 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 got all types of emotional issues. And most of all, too, they have unclean trespassing spirits dealing with them. But they don't mention that. God bless you, anointed. But they don't mention that because they're in unawares of that part. They can mention the mental part. Uh, 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 some of them are dealing with bipolar, dealing with all kinds of stuff. So it's easy for them to be out there with a gun shooting and killing. And they're unemployed and uneducated and poor. So that will explain something. Baltimore. In Baltimore, Maryland. I'm talking about right now. I'm not talking about last year. I'm talking about right now. We're in Maryland. I'm in Clinton, Maryland right now. We're in Maryland. Heaven's best healing and delivering church is in Maryland. Guess what? In Baltimore, I'm not talking about Maryland. I'm talking about one city, Baltimore. There have been 34 murders in the last 30 days. Black men killing black men. 34 killings in 30 days. That's one a day. What? There are policemen there, aren't they? They can get the National Guard, can't they? But see, it's demonic. It's totally demonic. Do you hear what I just said? In Baltimore right now, as you sit here right now, who's going to be killed tonight? Who's going to be murdered tomorrow night in Baltimore? Look at this, at this demonic 34 murders in 30 days. Please, we need to form the spiritual army to go and battle. Seriously, seriously, I'm looking for soldiers. God's looking for a few good men. That's what he said. I'm looking for a few good men. I'm looking for a few good men and women who are sold out for the Lord and who want to walk in the spirit, in the supernatural realm, who's filled with the Holy Ghost and the power of God and who want to war spiritually. I know what to do. Listen to me. When you prepare a war, you plan a war. I have the mind of a, of a, a general in a military, but I know how to plan battle on the battlefield, on the spiritual battlefield that will manifest in the natural and shut down the natural demons that's operating. Why do you think I said, contact me, email me, call me? I'm trying to set up the first meeting so we can war this thing. Listen to me. John 15, I'm going to keep throwing this out there. John 15, 13. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. I'm willing to lay down my life. 
like Jesus did for my friends. The whole human race are my friends, even the haters. Jesus loved everybody. I got to love everybody. Bless them that curse you. Pray for them that despitefully use you. Oh, do you hear me? Love your enemy. We've got a war. They are, black men are not the enemy of black men. We're the same people, same race. What's going on here? Now, now get this. Oh, man. Now, I told you. Hold on. Woo. Hold everything. Now, hold on. Let me see this. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Now, I said in Baltimore, then, what do you hear this figure? What do you hear this? Woo, woo. Uh-uh. This can't be true. In Baltimore, in 2015, in the whole year 2,426, was murder in little Baltimore. But hold up. Then last year jumped to 3,550 last year. Hold up. That can't be Baltimore. Uh-uh. Nope. I'm sorry. That's Chicago. 2,426 the bulk of the deaths and shooting incidents occurred in only five neighborhoods in the city's south and west side. Hold on here. Forget that. Forget that. I got to recheck those. Forget that. But five neighborhoods. Let's look at the five neighborhoods. There are five neighborhoods in Chicago that all these murders are happening in. Five neighborhoods, okay? And they said that it's the south side and the west side. And all of those neighborhoods are poor and predominantly black. Uh-oh, there it is right there. Father, in the name of Jesus, we have to fight. Let me tell you something right now. If you're getting hundreds and hundreds of black people killed, and it's only in five neighborhoods, in Chicago, it's the same way in D.C. It's only certain neighborhoods. It's the same way in every city. Certain neighborhoods, predominantly black and poor. So Satan know how to start a war. Make sure that there's a, 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 a generational curse of poverty on the people. Make sure that there is a generational curse of lack, financial struggle. Let there be a generation of no father in the house let there be a generation of granddaddies and daddies shooting and killing and going to prisons too and their sons following them. We can war against this thing and we can shut this thing down in Jesus' name. Uh-uh. Black area. Gangs are active. Now get this. They said that the shootings are not random. 80% of the victims in Chicago have previously previously been identified by police as more susceptible, susceptible to being killed because guess what? They have some ties to the gang or they've been arrested. So gangs are killing gangs. Blacks are killing blacks. People are killing people. Something's wrong. Chicago will add 1,000 new officers. It's not going to do any good. Guess what Reverend Jesse Jackson did, y'all? Reverend Jesse Jackson and a Caucasian reverend. Are this beautiful? What they did. Michael uh, Flager and Reverend Jesse Jackson and Reverend Michael Flager. They marched down Michigan Avenue in Chicago with big, giant white crosses on their backs. I like that. That's spiritual, but it's not warfare.
it's going to take spiritual warfare. I'm glad they did that, though. Uh, um, did anyone see that on the news? I didn't. And I'm a newsman. Did you see, uh, did they put all of the news, Reverend Jesse Jackson, walking down the main avenue? It's like a Georgia Avenue in D.C. Walking down, uh, it's like a Pennsylvania Avenue in Baltimore. Walking down Michigan Avenue in Chicago with a big white cross on his back or with another preacher next to him. Did you see it? Come on, tell me if you saw it. Anybody see it? Uh, I didn't see it. <laughs> That's right. I didn't hear them say it and I didn't see it on the news. Why not? It was newsworthy. Father, in the name of Jesus. No, it was too much Jesus involved. The Christ is Jesus. Jesus died on the cross so we could live. So this is why they didn't want to show it. They're trying to ignore Jesus. Now, now, in Baltimore, I'm telling you, there are innocent people being killed. Let me tell you something about something that you might not know. They always tell me how somebody was in the crossfire. There's no such thing as crossfire. There's no such thing as crossfire. There, there's no such thing. Crossfire does not exist. It exists in the natural, but crossfire does not exist. See, crossfire means that some people were, sh were shooting at each other or somebody was shooting at somebody else and hit you instead. An innocent bystander who happens to be in the area, but you were not the target. That's crossfire. No such animal. Yeah, they do want to silence the word of God, but they can't do it. No such animal. So don't even say crossfire. Let me tell you what that is. Demons are real. You, you don't think that a demon has the power to make sure that a demon uh, influenced person with a gun or a demon possessed person with a gun or a person being used by devils, violent demons and murder demons with a spirit of anger in them. You, if you don't think a demon can have them at a particular time, moment, a particular place in time at a certain time and shoot that gun and hit some people. That was planned. That wasn't crossfire. Satan knew where to aim that gun. Satan knew how to get them to shoot there. Satan was waiting for the setup to get an innocent bystander. When Satan can kill women and children, then his wickedness goes even higher. He hurts even more people. The hurt goes deeper if your child is shot as a bystander or if your wife or your sister or your mama or your aunt or your grandma, or your granddad, or your uncle, or your spouse. Get this. Bullets claim targets and bystanders alike. This year, January, 13 years old, black boy. You hear me? We better get this black on black crime taken care of first. Yeah, black lives matter. But we better take care of this black on black crime. Tell those black shooters that. That black lives matter. Tell them that. They're black. They ought to know that. But they don't because they're blinded by Satan. 13 year old. DeAndre Barnes. Have you ever tried to 
as a little teenager, as a little kid, have you ever tried to make some money the right way? You're young. You're so young that no one can hire you on a job. So, so you got to do little odd jobs to get paid. I did. When I was his age, when I was 10, 11, 12 years old in North Carolina, my uncle gave me a shoe shine box. I started shining shoes in front of the barber shop, in front of a store. I was about 12 years old. I started shining shoes. I hung my dad to make me some money. Is it my dad too? Hallelujah. And guess what else? The Afro-American newspaper was out. Even back then in the 60s, the African-American newspaper was out. And, and my cousin was one of those uh, distributors. Guess what? I started on my bicycle, on my English race of bicycle, red and silver. I started um, um, a delivering the African-American newspaper in the community. Then I started going out into the uh, um, white neighborhoods, sweeping up yards just to make something. Well, guess what? This young man cut grass. Yep. Well, my, well, I wasn't cutting grass then. <laughs> I wasn't cutting grass then, but I was sweeping up leaves then. But I, but, but, but I did those things as a young lad to make some money. Well, guess what? Angelique Dad joined. Guess what? A 13-year-old boy, DeAndre Bonds in Baltimore this year, January. He was shot. I'm sorry. They're talking about it January the 2nd. But he was shot this summer. Guess how he was shot? 13 years old now. He's not, a, he's not a gang member. He's not a, a, a chief. Thank you. He was trying to get a side job. He's not a chief. He's not a king. He was shot when he was out late with a squeegee. With a squeegee. Captain Schumann, a squeegee. 13 years old. And he had a squeegee in his hand. You know what a squeegee is. You know why he had a squeegee in his hand. You know that. He had a squeegee in his hand. The war against black on black crime. He had a squeegee in his hand. He was hoping to make a few bucks washing windshields of cars. As he stood on the side of the intersection, 13 years old, but he was out late. He got a late start. And he was squeegeeing, just washing people's car windows. And they give him some change or a buck or something to help this young 13-year-old child out. His father said the bullets were not meant for him. Did you hear that? They weren't. But they ripped him anyway. That's what his father said. The bullets ripped my son anyway. 13 years old with a squeegee in his hand. Wiping car windshield, dirty windshields off. Trying to make some money on the side. Young boy. Who knows? He might have been on his way to be a great businessman one day. Entrepreneur one day. On his own business one day. He already had a bit. He was in business for himself. He was working for himself. Now get this, his daddy said, now get this, they don't care who they shoot anymore. Uh-oh, satanic forces. The 13-year-old's dad said they don't care who they shoot anymore. Mm. Mm. Father, in the name of Jesus. Mm. Mm. Satan, you are lying, you are a deceiver. And I rebuke you in every black man. I declare that every black man will, will leave you and return to their first love, Jesus. I bind up curses in every black man to murder, of all violence to kill black men in the name. Thank you. Hallelujah. Touching agreement. In the name of Jesus, come out of our black men, you lying dog, you. In the name of Jesus. 
I bind up your generational curses in black men. They don't care who they shoot anymore. Say it, Ronnie Barnes, DeAndre Barnes' daddy. The boy's father, as he looked through his son's left behind baseball gear, that could be anybody's son. His son had a fantastic pitching arm. His son could pitch a baseball. My God, my God. Black men. The black men that shot this boy. You were once 13 years old. You may have played baseball, football, or basketball, or track, or whatever. He said his son had a fantastic pitching arm. But that promise is gone now. That promise is gone. That 13 year old boy's future promise is gone now. And his daddy said that in Baltimore, they shoot women and children and everybody. My God, my God. That's what his daddy said. Mm. Bystander. No such thing as crossfire. Say meant. Satan meant that bullet for that little boy. Because once that little boy was killed, now you got torment and suffering from mama, from daddy, from a whole community, from the kids at school, from all the relatives, the neighborhood. That goes deeper than the killing of black men shooting black men. You shoot some innocent people, that means that hurt and that pain, that carnage. The torture goes even deeper and Satan is happier. The more wicked he can be. But I know a God in heaven, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Israel, who has all power in his hand. Look, he's enduing us with power. Come on, y'all. Come on, people. People, email me, Pastor Angelo O. Jones at gmail.com. Come on, now we got to get this thing together. Pastor Angelo O. Jones at gmail. G stands for God. Come on here. Get, we got to get busy spiritually. I want to go all over the cities. Reverend Jesse Jackson, he walked there with a cross. But I want a war. I want a war. I want to fight a spiritual battle. It's a spiritual enemy. Now let's bring this thing to D.C. If you're from D.C., you're from Maryland, if you're from Northern Virginia, you're very aware of the 68-year-old grandma that was a bystander. Killed. Yeah, you heard me. 68-year-old grandma killed in Southeast D.C. while riding in a wheelchair. In a motorized wheelchair. Hmm. This just happened. Mm-hmm. Who killed her? A white man? A Chinese? Who shot that 68 year old grandma? A Hispanic? Oh, hold on, must have been a Swede. Oh, he was Italian. Yes, he was on the news, all over the news. If you live in this area, you know about it. No, he wasn't, oh, he had to be French. Australian must have killed her. No, a black man, an Irish didn't kill her. A black man shot her, shooting at some other black men. That's right, the black man. That's what we're praying for. That's what we warn for. A woman in a wheelchair was shot and killed. At, and guess what they call it? Crossfire. <laughs> no such thing. Family members say that Vivian Morrow, M-A-R-R-O-W, of Southeast D.C., guess where she was going? On the way to the corner store. She's just trying to go shopping. She's just going to the corner store to pick up something. You know, she had a nickname. It's, it is sad. It is sad. It is sad. She had a nickname. The Candy Lady. The Candy Lady. She would always buy candy and hand out to the kids in the neighborhood, to the relatives and stuff, the grandchildren. The Candy Lady. A 68-year-old grandma, candy lady, riding in a motorized scooter, in a wheelchair, 
going to the corner store, minding her business in her own neighborhood where she'd been there for years. Oh, hold, hold on. Uh, there was an exchange of gunfire. You know what exchange means, don't you? People shooting at each other. The normal in certain neighborhoods, exchange of gunfire. No. Demon-possessed people, demon-influenced people fighting again with powerful weapons, taking lives for Satan. And they have no idea. Yeah. Step out of the house for fear that she'll be victimized. Hey, a lot of people are scared to step out. I believe me, a mother of five already said she was scared to step out. Why? Because black men shot up her uh, apartment building all over the world. Yes, it is. But we're talking about the United States of America right now. I'm talking about black men, black Americans who born here, raised here. Uh, listen to me. They don't realize the brotherhood. They have no idea of the price that black people paid for them to even be living and have an opportunity to, 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 to get educated and get a, a career, a, a car, a house. They have no idea of the lives of, 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 of the three, four hundred people that were lynched. They have no idea of the dogs that were sick on people, of, of, of the arrests. My God, my God. Guess what, y'all? Grandma was murdered on Martin Luther King Jr.'s day. Monday, January the 16th, 2017, at 1020, around 1020 a.m. Yeah, they need to hear this. The whole world need to hear this. The whole world need to hear what God has given me. This is my assignment. This is one of my assignments. He called me for this. Your mama's Mexican has someone in front. Listen. On Martin Luther King Day. Waving the Confederate flag. Listen to me. Flag waved in front. Of her house. All of that. Is wrong. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And we walk. But right now, my mind is on stopping murder. Stopping killings. We got to first look. In order to kill racism. In order to take the sting out of racism in this country. We first got to shut down black on black crime. It's hard for racism to have power when Satan can't have black people killing black people. When our jails are not getting filled up anymore with violent black men. Prisons. If we can have them shutting down prisons like they shut down manufact manufacturers, the way they shut down all those manufacturers in, in Detroit and in Chicago, the way they shut down factories. If we can have them shut down prisons like that, racism uh, will, will, will mm, be as weak as I don't know what in this country. Do you understand me? Now get this. This mama. I understand that. I understand that there are some mean, some good officers, some bad officers. But I'm dealing with black shooting, blacks killing blacks. I pray to God that those bad officers get saved and do the right thing. Let, let me tell you something. Do you know that in Jesus' time, you had some Roman soldiers that were supposed to have been the, the law over Israel? And guess what? Over the Jews. And they had some terrible, terrible soldiers who was policing also. And one of them got their ear cut off by Peter when they came to take our Jesus away to, 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 to crucify him. But Jesus in his love on that, on that bad cop 
on that bad police, picked up the ear and put it back on and the ear was back on heel. We got to be more like Jesus. Do you understand me? Get this fact now. Get this. It's spiritual now. I'm talking supernatural. I'm talking spiritual now. I'm not dealing with the natural. Okay, there's no power in the natural. We're in the natural world, but we're not of it. We're, we are citizens of, of America, but we're also citizens of heaven. Heaven. And the government is on Jesus' back, on his shoulders, okay? Now get this. The woman, grandma, the candy lady, Vivian Morrow is her name. Uh, uh, she was wounded. I'm sorry. She, a man also was shot. He was wounded. She was killed near the intersection of Elvin's Road and Stanton Road, Southeast. Man, I've been on Stanton Road a million times. Back in the day. Back in the day, I was on Stanton Road. Who wasn't on Stanton Road? Myra is described as a mother. Uh-oh, hold on. She's a mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother. Who in the world want their grandma, poor, poor grandma, to be shot down by some black men in the street going to the store, going to the corner store? That's hell. That's hell. She, she was using that power scooter, that electric wheelchair, since the 1980s. Why? Because she was hit by a car. She was hit by a car. Man, look at that thing. Hit by a car in the 80s and shot down by bullets in the 2000s. Jesus. There are some curses running rapid among us. According to members of a family, hit by a car in the 80s. They said that the, that the candid lady was always looking out for the little ones. Always looking out for the little ones. The little ones. Do you hear me? The little ones. My God, my God. Now let me go to Romans 5.10. Let me go to Romans 5.10. You hear me? I'm going to go to Romans 5.10. I'm going to read Romans 5.10 to you. We're going to throw it out there. We're going to throw it out there. Romans 5.10. Romans 5.10. Am I there? Yeah. For if when we were enemies, oh God, come on, send this to the black men. I'm going to send this to the chiefs and the kings. I'm going to send this to the gang bangers. I'm going to send this to Chicago, New York, New Orleans, Baltimore, D.C., Philadelphia, Detroit, Boston, L.A., Oakland, and every city, New Jersey. For if when we were enemies, Black men, black men are not your enemies. We were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Saved by his life. Come on, Jesus. Help us, Lord. Jesus, we need you right now. We need you right now. She was always looking out for the little ones. Martin Luther King was looking out for us. Martin Luther King. who marched for these same young black men, for this generation who are killing the way they're killing. Martin Luther King was jailed. Martin Luther King was shot in his head by a sniper. Hey, NJ, shot in his head by a sniper for them. He took a bullet for all of them. He had a dream. But guess what? It's really messed up. Her daughter said, this is messed up. She said, I'm really at a loss for word. Now, this is it's the candy woman, 68-year-old woman that was shot, shot in a wheelchair by some guys shooting at each other in her neighborhood. The daughter said, I'm really at a loss for words because my mom was a wonderful lady. My God. It is sad. And she looked out for all of my family and cousins and even some of the people out there. And you know who the people out there are? The people in the hood. People in her neighborhood, out of there on the street, in front of the store. 
They call her mom. You heard me. The guys on the street. Boys out there on the block. They call their mom. He said, you know what I'm saying? William Merrill, her son said, they called her mom. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they knew her. She was untouchable. But they killed her. And then the mayor comes out. Mayor Bowser in Washington, D.C. About this grandma being killed. Mayor Bowser, call on us. Mayor Bowser, have a meeting with me. It'll change things. Have a meeting with me. I'm not looking for an interfaith prayer service. Have a meeting with me, Mayor Bowser. I have the antidote from God. Mary Bowser said, today, because of senseless gun violence, Washington, D.C. lost another resident. To put it mild, mildly, three children lost their mother, 11 grandchildren lost their grandmother. There is no excuse for this type of violence. This is what the mayor of Washington, D.C. said, Mary Bowser. Because someone engaged in reckless gunfire. Yeah, please. Y'all pray for me to get that meeting with the mayor in D.C. She really need to meet with me. I need to meet with her. If she meet with me, she'll be glad she did. You tell her. Call her up. Tweet her. Email her. Whatever. Write her. Text her. She need to meet with me. 11 grandchildren. Hold up now. Three children lost their mother. 11 grandchildren. 11 grandchildren lost their grandmother. 68 is young. 68 ain't nothing. That's a premature death. There is no excuse for this type of violence because someone engaged in reckless gunfire in broad daylight. What did the devil care about in the night of day anymore? They don't care. All the killings used to happen at night back in the day. Anytime someone shot, Oh, they ain't shooting in the broad daylight now. Now, mm, demons are bold, evil, wicked. They, Satan got the boys shooting morning, noon, and night. In broad daylight, while others were outside trying to live their lives. People in the neighborhood trying to live their lives. Hard-working people trying to work. Hard-working people going on a job. Hard-working people working, making minimum wage. Hard-working people working hard to send their smart children to college. And black men got a nerve to be pure hell on the community, bound the community, put them in bondage with fear and captivity. For what? For what reason? What are black men getting out the killings? Guess what they're getting? They're getting the early grade or prison time. That's all they're getting. I'm perplexed with God. God will empower us. You understand me? The violence must stop, Mayor Bowser said. And they did a GoFundMe for the funeral. Do you hear me? Um, New Orleans. Pastor Samuel Blakes, he said one Sunday in his church in New Orleans, a member wrote on the offering envelope, 11 people in our family murdered through gun violence within the last seven years. 11 people in one family murdered in seven years in their family. Now, I did say bystanders. I'm dealing with bystanders right now. I'm dealing with bystanders right now. Instant bystanders. Uh, a six-year-old. A black six-year-old. Church, help me. Church, church, help me. Tell your relatives. Tell your friends I'm doing this. Help me. 
I need some soldiers to go with me to do what we're going to do. You won't even have to talk to a game man. You won't have to do anything but follow what God has given me to do and watch the power of God shut down neighborhoods known for murder and the murder will completely disappear. I say completely disappear. It'd be one of those neighborhoods that's similar to the neighborhoods back in the day when they could leave the doors open. They'll never be leave the doors open again. But you know what I'm talking about, peace in the neighborhood. A black six-year-old shot by black men while he was sleeping in his bed from a home invasion. They kicked in the door to the apartment and just started shooting and shot a six-year-old. Now, this happened. I'm talking about bystanders. I ain't talking about no crossfire in the cross. Forget that. He was shot while sleeping in his own bed, in his own house. Or they kicked in the door of the apartment and shot a six-year-old in the arm. Think about this. Think about you as a child. You. See, see, I want you that's listening to me, Facebook Live, Periscope is looking at me. I want you to put yourself in, 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 in these people's places. I want you to use your imagination. And I want you to, to go back to your early years in life, six years old, five years old, seven years old, and you're sleeping in your house. Can you imagine... Gunfire in your house, your door, first your all your door kicked in. Gunfire in your house, and you sleep. You in dreamland somewhere. You've been watching cartoons all day, eating candy, eating hot dogs and french fries, playing with your little friends with the trucks and your little army men and stuff, and playing. Or some little girl playing with her little doll babies and little carriage. And you're laying in the bed and a demon possessed black man, a demon influenced black man shoots in your house and you're shot in your arm, in your own bed, in the middle of the night, shot. Can you imagine the trauma that that little child has and will have for a very long, 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 long time? Can you imagine what it's done to that kid's mind and emotions and heart and feelings for years to come? Can you imagine that kid going to the hospital, getting surgery, getting operated on, and then coming back to the same apartment? You wonder why he can't sleep anymore at night? You wonder why you're waking up screaming in the middle of the night? Father, in the name of Jesus, the children, the innocent children in this, in this, in this madness, this madness, black men, stop. Please, black men, stop shooting. Please, I beg you in Jesus' name. The kingdom of heaven suffered violence. But the violent take it by force. I'm going to tell you again. We're going to have to take those demon strongholds by force. And we can do it. Thank you begging with me. Thank you. I'm not talking about police action. Our weapons of warfare are not common. We're not going to use the same weapons. We don't need guns and knives to shut this down. Our weapons are not common. But they're mighty through God for the pulling down the strongholds. I'm not talking about natural weapons. Do you understand me? Now, let me go to Romans 5.18. Therefore, as by the offense of one, uh-oh, offense. You know what offense mean? That's an offense. Murder is an offense. Killing, kicking down that little boy's door, shooting him in his arm while his parents being shot at. Probably shooting at his daddy. Missed his daddy and got him. 
Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, Jesus, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. The gift of life has been given to all men. How dare you black men take this gift of life that's been given by God to, to these black men, women, and children, and you're taking it. You're in trouble with God. And that's worse than spending 30 years of life in prison. You don't want to mess around with God. Judgment day is coming. Every man will face judgment day. Hell is real. You're either going to be in eternal hell or eternal heaven. If you go to eternal hell, that means that you'll be tortured in pain every second of the day, every day. And the Bible says you'll be begging to die and won't be able to die while Satan laughs at you. Black men, heaven is real. Or you can be with God in heaven, with peace, where there's no more tears, no more pain, no more suffering. Hallelujah. When young black men get angry in an early age, they become dangerous. I was never an angry young man. I had a mom and a daddy. I had the greatest parents on earth. I was never angry. I got a lot of whippings. That didn't even make me angry. I got a lot of whippings from my mama. <laughs> but I love my mama. But I didn't get angry. There are some angry young men. And this preacher from Chicago, who's an activist in Chicago, he said there are a lot of angry young men that's out there armed and dangerous. But get this. New York City, a young man is accused of killing a jogger, a jogger who's white in Queens, New York. A 30-year-old beautiful jogger and guess what he confessed to why he killed her? You ready for this? This is why we must pray. We're going to war. This got something to do with black on black crime, even though his victim was white. Here's, here's, here's what it has to do with black on black crime. He said he killed her because he was in a bad mood. What? He said out of his own mouth, I was angry. I had some issues at home. I got 15 minutes, y'all. I got 15 minutes. Now, I really got 10. I'm going to pray for you the last five. Oh, we got a war. Hold on. Get this now. He said, this, this young man, 20 years old, kill a 30-year-old jogger with his bare hands. With his bare hands on, a, on a, a running trail, a jogging trail. He beat her and he strangled her. He choked her to death. A 20-year-old, are you kidding me? A 20-year-old is a baby. A 20-year-old is a baby. How do you have murder in your spirit so early in life? He was angry. But hold on, go even deep. Hold on, go earlier than that. He said, I was angry. I had some issues at home. There are a whole lot of home lives in a lot of neighborhoods that's that are um, a farm for angry children, male and female. Why? Because some way and somehow, Satan has gotten. Um, the situation where there is no father. Some don't even know who the father is. I don't know the father, know his name. Some know the father, but he's completely disengaged them from his life. So there are some mamas that are still, there are a lot of young mothers, a lot of young mothers who are still looking for love in all the wrong places. They have these children and 
and raising these children. So a lot of time, they're still trying to get a man in their life. They're lonely. They want a husband. They want a man. And they go from one wrong man, one wrong man to another. Some of them even bring drugs and alcohol into the house. A lot of the mamas get on drugs with the boyfriends and smoking dope right in front of the children. Issues at home. A lot of the dad is a, 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 a miserable and, and if the dad is in there, he could be an alcoholic beating the children, beating the mama, all kinds of hell. This is all satanic. This is all part of the setup. Thank you. All part of the setup. They're angry. So he was angry. He said, I just lost it. Then I tell you, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't tell you. Got my time's almost out. No, I didn't tell you. When he said, I just lost it. I, I've taught this to heaven's best. I've taught this to my church. A demon can take a person completely over. Shut them out. Shut them out of their own selves. You better hear me now. Quickly. Shut them out of their own mind. Why do you think that so many people who've killed a loved one or murdered somebody, the police said the number one thing that they say as they are walking them out of the place with their hands handcuffed behind the back is, is, I don't remember what happened. I can't believe I did it. I don't remember doing it. Why don't they, rem why don't they remember doing it? It's because what they don't understand is a demon Black them out. Black their mind out. So a demon took full control of them. So 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 